One of the hardest working devices found on any RV is the main propane pressure regulator. Simply put, it literally works non-stop from the time you turn on the service valve at the tank until you turn it off. If you have any propane aboard your coach, then you have a pressure regulator that's engineered to accept the fluctuating high pressure inside the container and reduce that pressure down to the acceptable rate that propane appliances are designed to burn at their respective burners. In another video in this series, I mentioned that we normally think of pressure in terms like PSI pounds per square inch, like air in our tires or in the air brake system. But the pressure in the propane system is very slight, so slight we use a more finite increment of measurement called water column inches. For RV appliances, the optimum setting is 11.0 water column inches, and that's the job of the common everyday regulator. Though common to every RV equipped with propane gas, there remains an air of mystery when it comes to the pressure regulator. What does it do? How does it work? Can it fail? We'll attempt to answer these questions in this video. Though all regulators perform the same function, not all are created equal. This one, for instance, is designed to work with twin DOT cylinders, common to what you'd find on a travel trailer. Keep in mind, some small motorhomes may also be equipped with DOT cylinders, but the majority will have ASME tanks bolted to the frame of the motorhome. This one, however, is designed for an ASME tank application, but there are still differences with this style as well. It's all about the position of the second stage vent, as you can see right here. It's a code requirement that this vent be positioned downward when the regulator is mounted, at least within 45 degrees of vertically downward. This regulator, therefore, must be installed vertically, which is not applicable to most ASME tank configurations. I always advise coach owners to always carry a spare regulator, especially if you like to dry camp in areas away from civilization. So be sure your spare regulator has the correct orientation of the second stage vent opening for your particular application. All RV pressure regulators have two stages. The first stage, positioned here on the inlet side, reduces the tank pressure, which can be anywhere from less than 100 psi to upwards of 200 psi. It reduces it down to just 10 psi. It's preset and not adjustable. As fuel enters the second stage, the pressure is reduced further to 4 tenths of 1 psi, or 11 inches of water column pressure. Here's how it happens. Inside each stage of the regulator, there's a rubber diaphragm, a spring, and an orifice and a seat, plus levers and pivot points and other mechanical components, as well as a vent opening to the surrounding atmosphere. As fuel enters below the diaphragm assembly of the first stage, its spring is compressed slightly, allowing gas to pass through a fixed orifice, which reduces the tank pressure to approximately 10 psi, as mentioned earlier. The fuel then enters the second stage where the pressure of the vapor overcomes the strength of this adjustable spring and the diaphragm begins to flex. As the movement of the diaphragm increases, the mechanical motion of the linkage moves the seat against the orifice opening, impeding the flow of gas. When a burner is lit anywhere in the system, the drop in pressure inside the regulator body allows the spring to push the diaphragm back down. This in turn allows the linkage to move the seat away from the orifice, permitting more fuel into the body of the regulator. As more fuel enters, the incoming pressure again overcomes the spring strength, and the seat again blocks the orifice opening, and as more fuel is consumed at a burner, the pressure drops inside the regulator. The diaphragm moves, the seat opens, and the cycle continues. Never attempt to adjust the pressure on your regulator. It requires special training and a few specialty tools like a water columnometer and a test device like this one. Always rely on the professional service shop unless you've had that specific training. For insight into how professional service technicians adjust and test the propane pressure regulator, please take the time to watch that other video in the series. But what you can do is simply keep the regulator clean and covered. 
and have it tested at least once per camping season. Periodically inspect the vents on each stage of the regulator. Dirt, dust, debris, mud, ice, slush, and critters can block this second stage vent opening. With a plugged vent, the diaphragm simply cannot breathe, which will result in higher than normal gas pressure entering the appliances and possibly causing damage. Also be sure the propane container is never overfilled. This can allow liquid propane to enter the regulator. If you ever see a gummy, honey-like substance like this at or near the regulator, the tank was likely overfilled at some point. If so, it's necessary to completely replace the regulator and possibly the delivery plumbing as well, depending on the severity of the contamination. Remember, we store and transport propane fuel as a liquid, but we burn it as a vapor. So take care of your regulator and your regulator will take care of you by feeding your appliances the correct amount of gas delivered at the correct pressure so that you'll have plenty of hot water, cold food, comfort heat, and a way to cook that meal come dinner time. On behalf of FMCA, thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to all the other videos in the series. And I'll see you in the next episode of Motorhome House Calls.